So let me hear you, good and loud. All right, Gary. All one. All two. All three. Take me out to the quarterback on the 26th of November 2018 beaming from WBRN radio and on the Boston Red Network and we had a round robin on a Sunday we had a special uh, program was dedicated to the 79th birthday what would have been of uh, Jerry Pippen we always remember him on the Monday morning quarterback he passed in uh, 2015 uh, we invite you to Stay tuned to that show. It was a, a, parts of it were a rebroadcast of a 2009 show Jerry and I did uh, roughly almost 10 years ago. And we talked about the Affordable Care Act, which had not passed at that time, and also the implications of single payer. That was appropriate because today uh, we are still talking about single payer. It was pointed out to me uh, by a lady that knew uh, Jerry, and Jerry was a single-payer person. And he lays out in uh, in the broadcast uh, on Sunday the problem with single-payer relative to the Senate that they had at that particular time. There were no doubt uh, politicians in the Senate that were owned, bought, and paid for by uh, the uh, insurance uh, monopolies, and they were not going to vote uh, for single payer because at that time, President Obama was in the White House. The Democrats controlled the House and the Senate, but they could not come up with those votes. And we look at health care in this country as an evolutionary process starting uh, in the 40s, he uh, pointed out in the uh, the uh, the cast uh, about uh, Congressman uh, what was his name? Uh, he's now retired from uh, Detroit. He was the longest uh, serving uh, Congress type. Uh, his wife now has uh, that position, but his father in the 40s, I think 1943 or whatever it was, had proposed, and that was on the the administration of Harry S. Truman. Or was it FDR? Um, think about that a minute here. It would I thought it was 43. Maybe it was 44. But anyway, it was in the 40s. Um, I, suppose, I suppose on the FDR. And then, of course, it was also um, proposed by uh, President uh, Truman. And from there on, on the administration of every president to try to get national health care finalized. As close as they came was in uh, the 60s under uh, Lyndon uh, Baines Johnson. He was able to pass uh, Medicare. And Medicare is the Cadillac of the largest uh, health care coverage of uh, mechanism that we we now have and at the time uh, Jerry and I were talking about uh, I recalling in the 60s the uh, commercials against uh, uh, Medicare calling it socialized uh, medicine etc well medicine there being socialized and what have you it became a win-win a pro uh, program uh, for the uh, healthcare industry and we'll be talking in a minute about uh, a nursing home chain was one of the larger ones 
that was uh, bought by a private equity company and what the results of it was. So all of these things uh, blend neatly in together. And we also had a recent study by the Rand Corporation, which uh, you'll find on the uh, Jerry Pippen Remembered uh, program uh, on uh, many of the outlets. It would be, be uh, iHeart, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, Spotify, and the lot. There are numerous other outlets, and we're adding them as quickly as possible. And, of course, going to bostonred.org. So those are some of the things that we're covering. We're still working on the open source report. We shall get it out. Firstly, though, we'll go to the conflict on the border. Now, this is uh, the border between... uh, San Diego on the uh, U.S. side and Tijuana on the uh, side of Medico. And remind people that um, the 1st of December, uh, or December, I believe it's the 1st of December, a new government will uh, assume the reign in Medico under uh, Lopez Orpador, who had been running uh, for many years as a progressive. U.S. border report. Uh, Reopen, excuse me, after clash with uh, migrants prompts a five-hour closure. This is from the San Diego Union uh, Tribune. We've been uh, using them because they are on the spot. The U.S. uh, border at uh, the the, uh, Sancido port of entry was closed in both directions for more than five hours Sunday after hundreds of immigrants rushed into the area, prompting federal authorities to use gas. The federal authorities said the immigrants tried to breach the border at multiple locations, uh, leading to a number of assaults on uh, border protection uh, personnel and uh, dozens of arrests. The chaos left uh, pedestrians on both sides of the border stranded, and snarl, snarl, excuse me, snarled, I get it right in a minute here, uh, freeway traffic uh, for miles, prompting uh, the closure of a nearby outlet mall on uh, one of the uh, busiest shopping days of the year. The confrontation highlights uh, the escalating tension along the border as thousands of immigrants from uh, Central America pour into a Tijuana in a recent week seeking asylum in the uh, asylum in the US following the uh, Sunday events the Mexican interior minister announced that it would deport about 500 immigrants who uh, tried to violently and illegally uh, cross the border a, a Mexican federal uh, police uh, official told uh, the Union Tribune that authorities were reviewing a video of the confrontation at the border and would be detaining and deporting those involved the statement added that the Mexican authorities have uh, had contained the protests at the border between Tijuana and uh, San Diego, and despite heightened tension there, Mexico would not use military forces to control the thousands of immigrants from a caravan currently uh, amassed at the border. U.S. Uh, Customs people uh, closed all vehicular and, and this is remember, vehicle and pedestrian crossings at about 11.30 in the morning on Sunday. Pedestrian crosses were first uh, to reopen about 3.30, followed by southbound uh, freeway lanes. There is a freeway lane there, and the uh, San Ysidro, uh, San Ysidro uh, crossing is one of the busiest ports of entry in the world with more than... Uh, 90,000 people crossing uh, between uh, San Diego and Tijuana on a daily basis. Uh, two reports of entry, um, Otag, uh, uh, Mesa, and uh, Takati remained open. Hundreds of immigrants began marching from uh, their shelter at uh, Beto Juarez uh, Sports uh, Complex and open-air sports uh, Stadium that's been a a, a mech ship, a shelter to uh, Mexico's uh, El Chaparral border crossing uh, Sunday morning. 
and about 11 members of the group uh, cra- uh, clashed excuse me, with uh, the Mexican federal police in a riot gear before uh, rushing into uh, a concrete canal towards an area of the border near uh, San uh, Vicentro Bridge, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, federal authorities said uh, the uh, migrants attempted to enter the U.S. at multiple locations along the border as well as through uh, freeway lanes, uh, literally there. Uh, During the altercation, projectiles were thrown, uh, they allege, and multiple uh, border agents were hit with rocks, federal authorities said. Authorities also deployed... uh, pepper balls and uh, tear gas so there was all sorts of things going on I would imagine what happened was after the gas came then the rocks anyway during the uh, the uh, incident the Tijuana uh, municipal police uh, detained uh, 39 people including uh, 15 uh, Mexicans and 24 Hondurans, two of the Hondurans were women police worked to escort the group uh at the border back to Benito, Benito Juarez a sports conflict complex excuse me um, the only thing the homeland security people could say Nielsen uh, who will prosecute to the fullest extent of the law anyone who destroys federal property oh boy Anyway, the uh, mayor of Tijuana, uh, Juan Emanuel uh, Castellum, also took to Twitter, everybody's on Twitter these days, uh, to address uh, the incident saying we will not allow our uh, bi-national uh, relations to be broken by bad behavior of the uh, caravan. So anyway, this is basically it. Uh, they don't say anything about the federal troops. I don't know where they were. Uh, they've got federal troops. Uh, maybe they're not that border crossing. Uh, one Tijuana resident who had crossed to shop uh, at uh, Las Americas Outlet Mall said that she had uh, seen a group of migrants uh, moving towards the border on their way to the mall that morning. The mall was later closed, so no holiday shopping there. The uh, women uh, did not, anyway, I'm not sure what, there was a uh, strong sense of depression, the woman said. I always ask myself if uh, they tolerate uh, being here, uh, being uh, cold, sick, and hungry. Now, uh, how must, uh, excuse me, how must it be in uh, their country? Well, no doubt about it. Uh, very terrible uh, conditions. And it's interesting. Uh, there's a rainy season there because normally in San Diego it's 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 nice and warm, but it has been a little uh, cool there. It's usually the reverse. It's getting very hot. But this is usually the uh, part of the, the year. The Metropolitan Transit System suspended the uh, Blue Line uh, trolley service at uh, San uh, was, uh, was Sandro. Uh, transit station onto pedestrian crossings were reopened. So they have trolley services and various other things there um, to accommodate uh, people. Now we'll go now to our regular lineup here and, uh, that we have. Uh, we have uh, items here, uh, starting with Reuters actually. Uh, senior Democrats in the House, uh, obviously we know who they are. Uh, it basically said uh, that. Uh, They'll put some brakes on some of the investigations of the uh, D.J. Trump uh, and administration and D.J. Trump and start to legislate, which is a uh, very prudent way to do it. The PEP will seek to avoid igniting political battles for now on uh, matters such as uh, the the uh, Russian situation as well as possible collusion between Moscow and uh, the Trump campaign uh, obstruction of justice I think the Democrats would be well advised to let it play out in the press where it's playing out uh, there's a number of things here the plea bargaining, plea bargaining uh, by uh, what's it, uh, Corsi um, and um, of his part he's the one who wrote several books a conspiracy uh, called conspiracy theories but 
Um, these are uh, hired guns uh, like uh, Corsi, and he was one of the people behind the infamous uh, birth certificate uh, charade. What would be interesting as they investigate this and also under the special uh, prosecutor Mueller and the information that they get, uh, was there any coordination between uh, Corsi and uh, the, the D.J. Trump operation because D.J. Trump ran on a birth certificate, birth program. And from the very outset, uh, we at this uh, mic uh, talked about this whole uh, birth certificate matter uh, being a matter for the state of Hawaii, who was the legal arbitrator there. If a state decides Mickey Mouse was born in 1900 in Hawaii, and that is the name on the birth certificate, it ends right there. It's uh, based on the state of Hawaii, the full faith and credit of that state, and it's recognized by the federal government and uh, Moms Mabley. And that's the end of the question. But they tried to come up, uh, they, the uh, Republican consultants, all sorts of things, that the birth certificate uh, put out there by President Obama was a false birth certificate, and finally they put out what they call a long form, and D.J. Trump and the others had to close up the business, put an out-of-business sign on them, then they went to the college transcript. But the whole thing was to delegitimize uh, President Obama and the Obama administration, that was the angle. So now some of this will come out uh, in the final report. So the Democrats do not need to do anything about this at this point in time. They need to move with the national uh, legislation, uh, period. But investigations have uh, uh, investigators, uh, hard uh, charges do not apply to um, uh, appear to be uh, prevailing in uh, shaping the Democrats' early agenda. Well, it, it should not because um, you don't want to get distracted. That's a big problem there. Representative uh, Nadler, he's from New York. He'll probably chair of the Judiciary Committee, Jerry Nadler. He's been, uh, he's been around for a very, very long time. And uh, that has been a political football. In fact, the Republicans in the last few days of their reign are trying to sub, uh, subpoena uh, Lynch, Laura Lynch, who used to be the Attorney General, and also Kumi, um, uh, the former FBI director. is not going to get anywhere, but these are some of the political footballs that have been played. There is much more uh, pressing of business uh, to be uh, put about. Now back to our health care saying we've been talking about health care. This is from the Washington Post. Overdoses, bed sores, broken bones. What happens when a private equity firm uh, sorts uh, to uh, care for society's most vulnerable? Now this is uh, by uh, Dave uh, Keating, uh, one there, and Peter uh, Huras, who uh, Uruski? Uruski. Anyway, yes, Uruski. Uh, this is Pottsville, uh, PA. Uh, state infect inspectors were uh, visiting uh, HCR uh, uh, Manor Care Nursing Home here uh, last year. Signs of neglect were uh, conspicuous. Conspicuous. <laughs> I'm having a problem with it. Anyway, disabled, a disabled man who had uh, long, uh, dirty fingernails told him that he was uh, tended to once in a blue moon. Yeah, that would be conspicuous, uh, no doubt about it. The bedside uh, call buttons were so poorly uh, staffed that uh, some residents regularly saw themselves while waiting for help to get to the bathroom. A woman dying from uh, uterine cancer, was left on a bedpan so long that uh, she was bruised. This is intolerable in a civilized society. The lack of care had uh, devastating consequences. One man had been dosed with so many opioids uh, that uh, he had to be rushed to a medical center. When a nurse's aide who should have uh, had a helper was trying to lift a uh, paraplegic woman, uh, 
The woman fell and fractured her hip as and her head landed on the floor beneath her roommate's bed. It was horrible. My mother uh, would uh, call us every day uh, crying uh, when she was there. That's from Debbie uh, Bojo, whose mother was also treated at the uh, manicure in, in Pottsville. That was in 2016. It was dirty, uh, like uh, running uh, a run-down hotel. Roaches and ants were all over the place. The owner of this was the infamous Carlisle Group, one of the richest private equity firms in the in the world. The uh, manicure nursing home chain struggled financially until it filed for bankruptcy in March of this year. During the five year uh, preceding the bankruptcy, the second largest nursing home chain in America exposes roughly twenty five thousand patients to increase the health risks, as according to inspection records by the Washington Post. The number of health care violations found at the chain each year rose 26% between uh, 2013 and 2007, according to the Post review of 230 other chain uh, retirement homes. Over that period, the uh, yearly number of health code violations at the company's nursing homes rose uh, from... 1,584 to almost 2,000. The number of citations increased uh, for, amongst other things, uh, neither preventing nor uh, treating a bed sores, very important situation, medical errors, not providing proper care for people who needed special services such as uh, injections, uh, etc., prosthetics and uh, various other things not assisting patients with eating and personal hygiene just a dirty place those categorized as a uh, as a potential for more than minimal uh, harm immediate jeopardy and actual harm the post found a number of uh, those uh, HRC Medicare Violations rose at 29 percent. Now, the Carlisle investors uh, completed in 19, excuse me, in 2011, a financial deal that exceeded 1.3 billion uh, from the uh, company's uh, investors. But it also saddled the chain uh, with what uh, proved to be an untenable financial obligations, according to interviews, financial uh, records taking money out of Medicare. That's the way these uh, operate. And shortly after maneuvering, the company announced uh, hundreds of uh, layoffs. In a little over a year, some of the nursing homes that were not making enough to uh, pay the rent. And over several years, cost-cutting uh, followed according to the financial statements analyzed by the uh, Post. And what they actually did was sold off the nursing homes themselves. And what, and then uh, set a company up, and the nursing homes had to pay rent. <laughs> that was one of the big problems. Uh, it was finally bought by an organization, a, a nonprofit group called uh, ProMedica Help, and they now have this chain, and obviously cleaning up uh, the uh, situation. Luvac uh, Philippion, a professor at Oxford, wrote a textbook, Private Equity Lays Bare. It, uh, it says it is a question of whether private equity methods are appropriate for all fields. No doubt about that. Some are not. And it's described as capitalism on a steroid. On Numbers Man, uh, last night, uh, actually on the week that it was, we uh, talked about uh, some of the private equities and where the money was. One of the founders of Carlisle, uh, David Rubenstein, explained to uh, Freaknomics Radio last uh, year that the role of private equity, you spend uh, three uh, to five years improving the company, incentivizing the managers to work harder and uh, do uh, more efficient things, and ultimately after three or five years, you sell or otherwise uh, liquidate the investment. Will Romney made millions of dollars during that particular situation. The origins of uh, HCR's um, Manicure deal go back to 2007 when 
The Carlisle uh, solicited uh, investors for money for a new investment fund. And over 300 investors invested, uh, mostly pension funds and uh, investment companies and big corporations put up the money. Carlisle raised $13.7 billion, with Carlisle agreeing to put up just uh, $700 million, about 5% of the pool, according to agreements between Carlisle and the investors. The fund called Carlisle Partners uh, 5 of V uh, then purchased an array of companies, a Canadian distributor of construction products, a Chinese shipping company, etc. Most of the uh, purchase uh, prices uh, was board money, uh, $4.8 billion, and Carlisle put up uh, $1.3 billion there, and uh, making uh, the uh, care of... Uh, Medicare's uh, patients and residents is our top priority. They lied. This is so pathetic. Um, and they blame uh, the problems. That, uh, let's get this first. Uh, hundreds of nursing homes and assisted living facilities, they own those, were sold to uh, HCP. That's a real estate investment company. HCR uh, then had to pay rent uh, to HCP. Uh, who in the hell they were? Carlisle uh, got uh, $6.1 billion from the sale, amounting, uh, an amount that's roughly matched the price that the private equity company had paid to buy the company just four years prior to that. So in other words, they made enough uh, money off the deal of selling the, the nursing homes to literally get back the price that they paid. Most of that, it was uh, they had a transactional fee thrown in there. Um Yield Carlisle uh, $61 million. So, I mean, there's money all over the place here. But, and the uh, longtime uh, chief executive, uh, Omont, was awarded $117 million on a deferred compensation scheme. I mean, this thing is just pathetic as we go along here. And what, what they did, they uh, blamed... Uh, New uh, rules on the Medicare. Uh, now a lot of uh, Americans have what's called uh, Medicaid Advantage. That was started on, the, started on the GW Bush, which pays the uh, nursing homes less than traditional Medicare. Uh, reductions in reimbursement rates uh, from uh, Medicare and uh, Medicaid, the state uh, federal partnership. So they could not adjust uh, to it uh, because of. The burden that they had, uh, HCR uh, Medicare was doomed. That's according to uh, Tom um, DeRosa, a chief executive of Well Tower, a company that acquired uh, the HCR uh, Care uh, real estate after the bankruptcy. I guess that's what they had left. I said in the interview. At a realtors conference last summer, it was uh, over leveraged and couldn't work under the uh, capital structure that uh, had been uh, crafted. That was the one reason they went out. But Carlisle is out of it, and the old people got the, uh, or people in these homes, got the bed sores out of the deal. And uh, the dancing around here doesn't really matter. All right, let's move on here. I have another story here. The U.S. Uh, in the United States, right-wing violence is on the rise. This is by uh, Wesley Laurie. He's written in, in Kimberly uh, Kindy. Anyway, he's written a number of things uh, as a Republican. Uh, Michael uh, Aiken uh, complains of feeling like an uh, outcast in uh at uh, Transylvania University in Lexington, Kentucky. Hardcore liberals uh, make fun of us, he wrote, and he faces discrimination on a daily basis. He's seen dropped out hmm. and enrolled in a trade school, but uh, the simmering rage led him uh, to camp out one morning in April, and when Atkins uh, pulled out a machete in the uh, campus coffee shop, demanded that... Uh, Patients state their political uh, affiliation before slashing at Democrats. There has never been as much ambiguity about ambiguity. Excuse me about why he did it. Uh, uh, 
Tashir uh, Reynolds, 22, a witness to the attack, said over the past decade, attacks motivated by far right wing uh, political ideologies have uh, committed dozens of shooting, bombings, and act of uh, violence, and far more than any category of domestic uh, terrorism. That's according to Washington Post's uh, analysis here. While the data uh, showed a decade long drop in violence by left wing groups, and well, these groups weren't really left wing. Violence by white supremacists and other far-right attackers have risen uh, since uh, the presidency of Barack Obama and skyrocketed onto D.J. Trump. This year has been especially deadly to 13 people. Uh, 13 uh, died in two incidents. A Kentucky gunman uh, that, uh, there and the incident in uh, Pennsylvania. The person that opened a fire in a Tallahassee yoga studio, killing two women and wounding five others. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on here. The Anti-Defamation League documented a 57% surge in anti-Semitic incidents in 2007, especially at schools on college campuses. The uh, Meanwhile, the FBI statistics released this month show uh, reported hate crimes jumped by 17%. And we go back to uh, the white supremacists in Charlottesville, Virginia. We always remember Heather Hire there. Uh, the guy named James Fields faces up to life imprisonment on multiple charges. His trial will start today. I assume. After the violence in Charlottesville, for example... Uh, D.J. Trump said both sides were equally to blame. That was just insane. Make America great again. Their caps while uh, chanting uh, demonstrators while chanting racist and anti-Semitic um, slogans. And uh, Start maintains uh, the uh, federal funded uh, global terrorism uh, database. The most comprehensive list of uh, terrorist attacks available to the public. The database uh, tracks uh, terrorist incidents in the U.S. and around the world uh, since 1970. Violence, uh, non-state actors, uh, whether it be political, economic, religion, or social goals through a fear or intimidation. I mean, it goes up and up and away. And let me move along here. Uh, this is uh, Atkins' uh, mother that's back here. Amy uh, said her son is uh, filled with remorse and sorrow. I doubt that very seriously. But uh, the Pittsburgh Moss, moving along here. The uh, time uh, police arrested uh, four members of White Rabbit 3, that is uh, 3% uh, Illinois Patriots, uh, Freedom Fighters Militia and any uh, government group there. These militias were particularly um, got to start uh, under uh, Bill Clinton. Uh, had them all over the place. Period. Return to the old days. Our old America. I'm not sure where that is. Uh, but uh, we'll see. And when politicians speak and talk about the politics of hate and division, people who don't know us, uh, see us as enemies. That's from somebody named Omar and Mohammed Omar. He is uh, the Islamic Center's executive uh, director. I think this was in is in Illinois. I think so. But that's just the uh, the tip of the iceberg. There's always been uh, this. Uh, Intolerance, the history of the right, uh, particularly Ku Klux Klan, their idea of intimidation, a very uh, tactic running around in uh, white sheets. Uh, on Fridays, we uh, always, on Friday, excuse me, on, on Saturday, the week that was, we uh, introduced it uh, by Stetson Kennedy, Stetson Kennedy Foundation. He's the man that literally closed the uh, Klan down, took away their charter, embarrassed them, and etc. But that has always been a situation that the right in this country 
as in, in many other countries, has always resorted uh, to violence, uh, maiming and killing people, both as the crime itself and a quote-unquote a fear tactic. And they have targeted the left and also targeting women and, and various other soft targets has uh, been their uh, call and trade. Part of that is a misbelief that they can intimidate people uh, by killing others. The attack on heaven higher. That they can intimidate people. And and, and also a misconception uh, that, the, uh, that people on the left are quote-unquote soft. Uh, which is which is not the case, but at the same time, spousing out of their mouths, uh, claiming that uh, Aquifer and organizations of that nature are um, increasingly violent. So, in other words, you have it in two uh, different ways there. But this is basically behind the fear of change, and if we can just intimidate people, is the reasoning there. We can slow them down. Now, we can't do that. Uh, we'll harm them, uh, if, whether it be uh, physically, financially, uh, whatever, uh, interfering with their economic well-being. That's what the Klan did, not only intimidating people, burning down their houses, businesses, etc., but the White Citizens Council made sure people weren't hired. These are, these are nothing new. These are tactics that have went on and on for many, 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 many years and uh, I'm not sure we'll. How Southern uh, politicians defend white supremacy and make the South poor. Another one here. This is David Bateman um, here in Ira uh, Katz Nelson. Anyway, um, politics in the American South uh, have shaped and continue to shape politics across the U.S. The South's profound uh, political realignment after the passage of the Civil Rights Act in the 60s, helping the Republican Party. And we see that um, playing out in uh, Cindy Hyde-Smith's uh, uh, situation here. Paradoxically, the South was both a region apart and centrally important to national uh, policy and politics. As lawmakers were uh, not only local representatives, but ambassadors for the South itself, writing in 1949. The renowned political scientist V. O. Key. This is a fellow to remember. Even uh, wrote how these men uh, saw their uh, task as managing the foreign relations of the South with the rest of the uh, nation. A new book, Southern Politics, Congress, and White Supremacy after uh, Reconstruction, uh, sets to uh, out to understand the foreign relations were conducted. Now, I'm not sure... The book focuses on a southern, congress, southern congressional representation between um, 1877 and uh, 1932 when uh, Reconstruction ended until the New Deal. At the same time, the Democratic Party, which was the only vehicle for political influence in the South, was a national minority. There was a little... Uh, Perspective uh, for Southern politicians being a uh, prospect, excuse me, of being elected as a president. At the same time, uh, Congress uh, was uh, where Southerners had at least some hope to obtain political power. And one Southern uh, Democrat, uh, it was uh, in uh, Congress and the Senate in particular, which had in the past, when all else failed, uh, been of the last refuge of people of my uh, beloved Southland when uh, political uh, passion and uh, prosecution sought to nullify their uh, self-government. So on we go here. When uh, Southern lawmakers arrived in Congress, they treated the maintenance of self-government and white supremacy as paramount. For this reason, they evaluated all legislation upon two uh, main dimensions its direct consequences for public policy as well as its consequences direct and indirect uh, for the uh, racial order. If a piece of legislation had no uh, implication implication for white supremacy, the South behaved as other regions. If, it, uh, if, it represent, if its representatives had diverse preferences and uh, were no more or no less 
uh, influence than their numbers would imply. When a policy threatened uh, the region's uh, racial order, white uh, southern legislatures' uh, intense support for the order enabled them to unify and then use uh, bargaining or obstruction, as you've seen uh, much of that's what the Republicans did under Barack Obama. How could the South majority uh, muster this power? Because legislators outside the South didn't uh, prioritize uh, the civil rights and political rights of African Americans. It was a classic example of how intense uh, factions uh, can win uh, when the majority is indifferent. One example of the uh, of, uh, was a momentum, momentous, excuse me, defeat of the federal election bill of 1891. In both the House and Senate, the majority of lawmakers almost certainly supported the bill. The president at the time uh, did so also, William Henry Harrison. But it lingered. Some in the uh, congressional uh, minorities' intense commitment to white supremacy uh, also affected uh, their view of uh, Legislative rule with northern allies, they repeatedly help write rules that would help uh, them defeat, uh, defend, excuse me, the South's racial order. Until 1917, there was no rule that allowed majorities to end the debate in the Senate, allowing uh, minorities uh, to use that was a filibuster. The South used the filibuster. Now it's gone. Paradoxically, the South was both a region apart and. Uh, of a central importance to national policy and politics. Its lawmakers de- Oops, I'm going back here. Sorry about that to be okay. Let me just finish this up while I'm ahead of the game. And uh, the, uh, the South uh, paid a huge uh, price for relentless commitment to white supremacy. Southerners regularly opposed bills that would benefit the poor whites because they feared that African Americans would benefit. One example was the Blair Bill, which uh, would have significantly increased federal spending, largely in the South, to pay primarily for education to fight illiteracy. The proposal had wide support amongst uh, whites and blacks in the South, although the majority of Southern Democrats voted uh, for uh, it on other occasions, and in the they uh, balked. The reason was their fear that enhanced uh, African-American literacy would undermine a white supremacy. Because of the intense commitment to white supremacy, the uh, Southern Minority in Congress found ways to increase its influence. But this led in uh, in an important irony. Their efforts gave the South more political power, but left the South much poorer. And that is... uh, the reason that the uh, South is uh, poor uh, today and this lack of, uh, in a state, say, as Texas, that has inadequate uh, medical care, inadequate education, and what is happening there, more and more people are being imported into the state to carry on those uh, types of uh, uh, functions. We do have a poll here out of Mississippi. And this is by a Republican outfit, R&RH Elections. Um, it has uh, Cindy Hyde-Smith at 54%, Mike Espy at 44%, and 1% undecided. And if we look at uh, 84% are certain to vote. That's 64% of Europeans, 32% of the African Americans. And the females are fifty three percent and uh males are forty seven percent. We won't get into the congressional districts here. The first round, uh SB got a forty five percent, the Heights forty four percent, and McDaniel a twelve percent. And the party ID there, Republicans that we just talked about that. We didn't talk about the transition from the Democratic Party uh, to the Republican Party. It was 54%. Democrats at 44%. You can see what's shaping up here. And support uh, for various candidates. Hey, Hyde Smith of the European vote at uh, 64%. Uh, 
of the European vote. Uh, so this is 84% actually of Hyde Smith, 15% for SP. SP needs 20% to uh, or more to pull this off. You know, one percent of African Americans. I don't know what they are, and supports Hyde Smith and ninety-eight percent SB and thirty-two percent of uh, the uh, people are African Americans in uh, this uh, setup. So this is basically uh, where it all went uh, in terms of laying it out, and and, and they say that uh, that uh, our RRH has uh, uh, Sydney Heights-Smith up by 10. The RRH uh, elections is a Republican-leaning election uh, blog, and they are not uh, supported by anyone. They uh, seek uh, um, donations. So we, we can append this, we will, on some of ours. Anyway, now and go and do the sport. We're running all kinds of ways over time here. In the NBA last night, the Magic was at the Lakers in Los Angeles. Magic 108-104. to The Suns were in the Motor City Pistons 118-107. to The Hornets were at the Hawks in Atlanta. A one-point game there. Hawks 124-123. to The 76ers were in Jersey. A uh, two-point game there, 76 is 127 to 126. The Heat were at the Raptors. Raptors at 125 to 116. The Knicks were at the Grizzlies. Uh, Knicks are 103 to 98. The Jazz was at the Kings. Uh, Jazz 133 to 112. And finally, the Clippers were in Portland. Clippers 104 to 100. On to uh, College of Basketball over the weekend. Uh, some of these we've given Oklahoma and West Virginia's Oklahoma 59 to 56 close score there Washington and Washington State Washington uh, 28 to 15 and and UFC and it's South Florida UFC 38 to 10 and Texas Kansas 24 to 17 and on Saturday finally Auburn and uh, Alabama on Alabama 52. To um, uh, 21, South Carolina in Clemson. It was Clemson 56 to 35. Notre Dame and uh, USC. O.J. Simpson's old school. It was Notre Dame uh, 24 to 17. Michigan in Ohio State it was all Ohio State 62 to 39. Ohio State, Georgia Tech and Georgia. Georgia 45 to 21. And in an overtime game, at LSU and. Uh, Texas uh, A&M. Texas A&M finally came out there, 74-72. to Florida and Florida State. It was all Florida there, 41-14. Uh, to 14. Well, I wonder where's Deion Sanders. Anyway, uh, Maryland and uh, Penn State. Was, it was Penn State, 38-3. to Kentucky and Louisville. It was Kentucky, 56-10. to BYU and Utah was Utah, 35-27. to Illinois and Northwestern. Uh, Northwestern came out 24 to 16 over the Illini. Syracuse and Boston College. It was Syracuse 42 to 21. Utah and Boise State. It was Boise State 33 to 24. And Pittsburgh and the University of Miami. Uh, 24 to 3 was the score there in Miami. And Kansas State and Iowa State. It was Iowa State 42 to 38. And on to the NHL, we go very quickly here. The Flames and Coyotes, it was Flames 6-1. to one. The Devils and Lightning. It was the Lightning 5-2. to two. The Ducks and Predators, um, Predators 6-2. to two. And finally, the Oilers and Kings. It was, it was uh, the uh, Kings. Uh, 5-2. to two. Now my glasses on, so I have to make sure that we got that right. And we did get it right. Anyway, this will do it uh, for us on the Monday morning quarterback for the 26th of November, 2018. We'll talk to you uh, soon. We have uh, a, an open source report. That's our technical report on open source and library uh, software and hardware. Have a good week.